Hello, you guys. It is the pretty coach here. Um, Naeem Shakam Yashral, also known as Jude. Um, I am coming with with a topic that I've been wanting to speak on for about a week now. Um, the topic was brought back to my memory by. A subscriber on my Pretty Coach Oracles channel. So um, let me do a really quick shameless plug there. If you are not subscribed to the Pretty Coach Oracles, which is my intuitive reading and tarot card and oracle card um, page, you should take a moment to go do that or at least just go and check it out and see if it's something that you would be interested in. Um, I do post a lot of um, just spiritual insight, basically, and counsel, okay? Um, yeah, so that's that with that. Now, to get back to the topic at hand, because of one of the readings, um, which was very spot on, I think, for this particular subscriber, he had asked me about forgiveness because someone had cheated on him, um, actually his wife, <laughs> and his wife had cheated on him with I want to say his best friend or someone that was really close to him. And he was having a really, really hard time pretty much forgiving the both of them. Okay. And so he asked me, he was like, I don't, I don't think I can afford a reading, but you know, would you please break down to me the concept of forgiveness? And this is what kind of made me want to have this video. Okay. Um, I may come back and do another video where it is just a conversation and a discussion or something of the sort, but I did want to record my thoughts, um, while I was thinking on it. And I've thought about the idea and the concept of forgiveness many times over, um, probably so many times that it's almost like I haven't thought about it, which may sound weird, but... You know, you can think about something so fast and probably so many times that you it's so often that it's like it doesn't exist at all. Or it's like it happens so frequently, it's like it doesn't at all. And I don't know. I guess the example I can give is how fast our heart beats, right? We know that it's beating and we know that it's there, but you don't think about it Um or you actually think about, well, no, with the heart beating, a lot of people don't think about their heart beating, but they know that it needs to be. So it's like this known thing, but you don't think about it. And everything, it's like it just happens so quick. I don't know how to describe it. And I think I definitely just fumbled there. But hopefully somebody can understand where I'm coming from. You know, this is a thought that so frequently flies through our minds that maybe, or maybe through my mind, that it's like... I've thought about it so often and so many different times, yet it never, you know, I never made a video about it and what have you. So now here's that opportunity. I wrote back to him as, you know, best I could there, but it definitely made me want to talk about it more. So here we go. To me, the concept of forgiveness it's actually offering something before someone even acknowledges that it's necessary. And I say that probably because of the, the prefix for. Um, for is usually something that happens prior to. That was something that made me think about that. I was talking to my ex about it once before, and I was like, you know, this is something that is a gift that's given to a person before they even acknowledge it, before they even ask for it to me. Even though you can ask for forgiveness, one can ask for it, you know, and then a person can then say, oh, yeah, I forgive you, you know, and Maybe to that individual who had who did ask for it, it may not have been a gift that was offered ahead of time to them or they didn't see the process of what it took, you know, for that to be a yes. But I presume and I submit 
that there had to be some type of mental thought processes that went into a person accepting somebody's apology and say and 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 even accepting someone's request to be forgiven now my mind also goes to the other aspect of okay well what happens and and I, okay before i go to that next thought i'm going to say that i would presume that someone would have to forgive a person already in order for it to even be an action that they're willing to give upon the person's request. So I'm going to see if I can give an example really quick, just in case that didn't make sense. Prior to like, let's just say that family members who, you know, may not be the best of friends, but they are a family. They say things or do things that hurts one another or really upsets the other. And then over the span of maybe two to three days to a week, one of those people come back and they have this discussion and they talk about everything that happened and what have you. And maybe someone explains, you know, hey, I wasn't in my right mind or maybe they don't have anything to say why they operated the way that they did, but they just wanted to say, listen, I'm sorry and You know, I want to know that we're good because everybody's not going to say, will you forgive me? Right. And some people will. So for the sake of this conversation, we'll say that the person asked for forgiveness. And there's this other person who's like, "Okay, you know. I appreciate you coming to me about this. I appreciate you taking the time to tell me where you were, where your mind was at, where your head was at, whatever. And I apologize as well for my part in this. And yes, I forgive you. And I I hope that you'll forgive me too. There was something that took place, hopefully, over a span of time in both subjects' minds that made them comfortable or open to the idea before ever speaking with one another. There has to be something, maybe a desire for peace or a desire to be able to talk to that particular family member or to be comfortable even around that particular family member, to not have any drama or bad blood. No, we may not be the best of friends. We may not spend every, you know, time that we have every bit of free time with one another, but we want there to be a level of peace. And maybe it could be because, yeah, I value you who I value who you are to me, whatever the case may be, or I value you simply because you are a human being and I don't want to harm you, even with my thoughts, whatever the case may be. There are some thoughts that took place in order to make the whole act of forgiveness even feasible whenever the person asks or if never. And one of the things that I feel that I've learned about forgiveness is that, yes, it is an offering, you know, because at the end of the day, let's just say that you've got someone who's still extremely hurt and they're not ready to forgive. But someone comes and they're like, "Okay, would you please forgive me? Okay, a person is like, no, I'm not ready to yet. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And then they have to go and they think on things. They they let things marinate. They're worked on whatever. In time, there is still those things that happen, hopefully, that would cause the person to change um, their behavior to where they would offer at some point the gift of forgiveness, even if after the fact. I think what I'm trying to point to is that Forgiveness, first and foremost, while people try to withhold it, they don't realize that a lot of times it causes a heavy burden on the person who's not offering it or the person who doesn't gift it. There is weight upon you, whether you believe that or not, whether you believe it or not. 
Now, I am a person who is extremely forgiving. Some people may say probably I do that too much or I'm silly because of it. But to me, it is the best thing for me because it liberates me. It frees me. I can flow in peace. I can flow in love. I can flow in kindness because I'm not going to hold this grudge or I'm not going to continue to remember the things that maybe a person did or said that hurt me, which gives them as well as myself liberty. Someone may be wondering, okay, so how does it liberate you, Jude? Well, like I mentioned before, I don't have to walk around angry or upset or tensed up every time this person and I are in the same room together. You know, just think about the way that you, your body actually reacts to people whom you haven't forgiven for something that they've done to you. If they come around you, your whole attitude tends to change. All of your body language changes. Sometimes you become tense. Other times you're ready to say, I'm out. Oh yeah, I'm about to head out. That's my cue. If you were happy before, the moment that this person steps into the room, now there is a visible change in your demeanor. First of all, I have never been the type to allow or to want to allow anyone to have that much control over me. Now, don't get me wrong, though. There are things in this life that happen that are so painful And I swear it's designed to cause you to move that way. And I don't want this to be too long, so I'm going to get ready to wrap my thoughts up about it. But as a survivor of sexual abuse, this is what I, I'm speaking from experience when I say that for me, forgiveness freed me first. I had horrible nightmares trying to relive and, 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 um, you know, kind of alter the events the way that they went. That helped me a little, but never when I was in the, oppress- in the presence of my abuser. I was always quietly and silently fuming. Sometimes I would even work up the courage to noticeably show that I was upset. So let me tell you what that took. It took a lot of work. I'm not even going to care. It took a lot of work for me. And not only that. I would be mean and hateful. And mind you, this was prior to anyone really knowing what happened. So I'm mean and angry. I'm happy before he gets there. But once he arrives, I'm totally the opposite. My everything shifts for me. I don't want to be around the people who I once was just around. I become a recluse and I'm angry. That took so much energy for me. It took hours and Moments and days and years away from my life. Meanwhile, the other person, the abuser, is going on living whatever lies that they have. Now, don't get me wrong. Here's the other gift about forgiveness. This is about the other person now. Yes, there are some people who will continue to live a lie, and that's up to them. That's not even our concern or our business, right? It's really not. And I think that's another way that we can ensnare ourselves. We want to ensure that people who hurt us get their just due. And we want to be the ones to do it or we want to be around to be able to witness it. It's like we want to make sure that we get to see it. And to me, that is our issues. And that's how you can stay snared by all these low vibrational Energy such as anger, resentment, hurt, fear even. All of these things are the ways that we give our own power away to someone over and over and over again. And in essence, you re-abuse yourself each and every time you allow those things to take precedence over who you truly are. The way that you liberate your attacker, your abuser, or the person who hurt you or harmed you is that when you experience the liberty, you give them liberty as well. Liberty for what, Naeem? Liberty for what, Jude? Okay, I'm going to tell you. You give them the freedom to change their behavior without punishment. And 
And I'll even go as far as to say without immediate punishment. Now, some people may be like, okay, well, why would I ever want to do such a thing? Well, here's the thing. I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but most people have the ability to change. And a lot of times they desire to change. Now, that's not, you know, everyone that there are people who, if they have the ability to get away with it, they will and they do. And that's, you know, it's very true. There are souls that exist here like that. And guess what? The universe always takes care of those people. Always better than you and I could ever. So still, it would be a waste of time for us to try to exact this punishment. And also, I think a thing that we need to remember is that let's keep in mind that a lot of the things that we actually get hurt by or that we don't enjoy or that we don't like done to us, we sometimes do to other people. We do it to one another. And so forgiveness is also acknowledging yourself in another person. No, okay, you may not think that you're a rapist, right? And you may not be in this life. You may not ever, you don't know what that's like. Not trying to put you in the same category. But now let's talk about the petty things that we sometimes get angry about. Okay, someone really bad mouthed me to another person that I'm close to or they bad mouth me, right? Sometimes we've, we've done that to other people. We've done that. We've been on the end of bad mouthing people. How about even if you didn't think it was bad mouthing? If sometimes people heard the things that we said about them to other people, what if that person considered what you spoke as bad mouthing them, even if we perceived it to be truth? And then if they overhear it and it makes them change their behaviors or their interactions with you and you value the friendship, but you didn't know that they were responding the way that they did, would you or would you not ask for forgiveness? Would you or would you not want to salvage the relationship that you value? If the answer is yes, if you can really take your mind there, which it should not be hard. We're all human here and we've had these experiences. If the answer would be yes, then this too is a reason to offer forgiveness for yourself because you would desire it. Sometimes we hurt people or actually I need to rephrase it. Most times we hurt people with no intention to do so. People switch up on you, change up on you behind something that you said or that you did that you had no ill will or ill meaning towards them about. But it hurt them nonetheless for whatever the reason. And most people don't say anything about it. They just change their actions. And before you know it, someone that you were talking to, you're no longer talking to anymore. Or maybe they're snappy. Whatever may resonate with you guys. The point is, is that as as people... Who, does, who really value social interactions, right? I would say gift people forgiveness because yes, it's something that you desire, but most importantly, because it's something that frees you and the other person. Who knows what they may go on to do in this life? Forgiveness doesn't mean that you 100% agree with what they did. It doesn't mean that you say, okay, go on to do this more to other people. That's not what forgiveness says. It says, I'm going to give myself peace and I'm going to release you from my judgments, from any harsh punishments that I could have been, you know, putting on you. And I free you up to change your behaviors for the better. But guess what? If they don't, the universe has an amazing way of sending judgment or the punishment, rather, that a person deserves. It's called reaping and sowing, and it's called karma. They get these things back. Even if it's not directly to them, 
if they have children, sometimes those things come up on their children. And it's unfortunate, but it's what happens. And it is justice. But be mindful when you don't want to offer someone forgiveness, because again, there's going to come everything that we do comes back to us. Whatever seeds we plant comes back. I'm telling you, it's true. I'm going to stop the recording here because it's already longer than what I had hoped. I hope that you guys will share with me your own thoughts. Please be kind. Please be respectful. That's all I ask. If you like this audio um, and if you like this conversation, then give this video a like. Okay. And also, please subscribe to The Pretty Coach here. And also, like I mentioned before, check out The Pretty Coach Oracles as well. You guys have a wonderful day.